Hello everybody and welcome to another Blackbird audiobook. This is going to be the last story, Hide and Seek. I am so excited for this one. Uh, it seems to be a lot shorter than the other two, uh, which I really enjoyed by the way. If you want to watch them, then you can. They will all be um, on my channel. Uh, and there will be a playlist for all of my pl uh, all my audiobooks that I've done. Uh, I'm really excited for this one. I've heard it's got um, some lore significance, which is what I look for in these stories. Uh, but mostly I, I just sit here and enjoy them. Um, saying that, uh, I, I already have seen something that could mean something. Um, everyone knows uh, The Cliffs is coming out uh, in a few days, actually. Um, and I'm really excited to start reading that, got, that for you guys. Uh, but I do see um, the surname Billings, which was actually in the word cloud for the most words used in the cliffs. So that could draw a connection. Anyway, I have no idea what this story is going to be about, apart from hide and seek. If you do enjoy, then please do give this video a like and make sure you subscribe for my audiobooks on the cliffs when it comes out. Anyway, I think we are very overdue to begin. <laughs> Toby, Toby, Toby. Kids chanted as Toby Billings hunched over the Ultimate Battle Warrior arcade game at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Games. His left hand clenched the joystick tightly, shifting left and right, up and down. His right hand punched the action buttons for his warrior character to bust the graveyard ghoul opponent in the face and bust the graveyard ghoul opponent in the face. Wait, never mind, I read the same line twice. Let's start again. His right hand punched the action buttons for his warrior character to bust the graveyard ghoul opponent in the face and kick him in the gut. There we go. Uh, I will say just before we carry on, um, this is my first reaction, obviously, like every other audiobook I've done. This is my first reaction for this story. Repeatedly, black blood and green sweat splattered from the ghoul. It was freaking awesome. Sweat dampened Toby's upper lip. He shifted the peppermint-flavoured toothpick inside his mouth from one cheek to the other. His arm muscles clenched tightly. He was about to achieve his highest game score for Ultimate Battle Warrior. All he wanted was to be the new highest scorer. He'd been focused on the game all week and he was almost there. Almost. He pounded, pounded, pounded on his opponent. Bam! Took that sucker down. Winner flashed across the screen. Toby pushed off the game, raised his arms in victory. Heck yeah. Someone patted his back. All right, Toby. Take that sucker. Toby punched the air, grinning. You had to take first place this time, Toby. Toby expelled a breath, cracked his knuckles, then took a moment to enter his tab initials. Tapping his foot as he waited for the top scores to flash on the screen, his smile fell away as he blinked in disbelief. No freaking way. He still held second place. Defeat sunk like a rock in his gut. Oh, nah. Your bro is still the highest score. What a drag. Toby's hands clenched on the controls. Sure enough, his older brother, Connor in Connor's initials, C-O-B, was still listed as number one. Always number one. Jaw tight, he slammed his palms hard on the game. Dang it! Kids started to walk away except for this annoying guy called Reggie. Don't worry about it, Reggie said, slurping a milkshake. His hair was a mess of red curls, flaring out like a halo above his head. You'll get a game over him eventually. You're just 1,000 points behind. That's practically nothing. Toby curled his lip. Every game in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Games had his brother listed as the top player. He thought he had this one, for sure. He cracked his knuckles and turned away from the stupid game. Then he grabbed his soda cup from the small table next to him and sipped flat root beer through the straw. There's still hide and seek, Reggie went on. It just opened up a week ago and your brother hasn't even played that one yet. I mean, I haven't seen him anyway. And you still have to play it. When you do, you'll have the advantage, no problem. No. He hadn't told his brother a new game attraction had opened at Freddy's just for that exact reason. Toby wanted to play it first and snag the top spot. His brother used to have a part-time job at Freddy's when he was in high school. He'd spent the, his breaks and after work hours playing all the arcade games in the place until he'd become the top scorer on every single game. Now that he'd graduated last year and moved on to 
in his words, a real job, Toby had taken over his old job helping out with cleaning around the family restaurant. Man, he wanted to beat his brother at a game just once. Was that too much to ask? Toby adjusted, adjusted the beanie on his head. Yeah, I guess. He'd been watching the long lines die down on the new game, waiting for all the dumb little kids to finish playing. It was a half hour before his shift started, and he had some time to play around to get a feel for the game. Later, he muttered to Reggie. Go get him, Toby! Then the kid yelled, then followed with some annoying howling noise. That dude was such a weirdo. Toby heard bowling balls crash into pins from the small bowling alley as he walked through the crowd in the arcade area. Voices and game sounds melded together, echoing in his ears. They were all sounds he'd grown accustomed to in the, in the six months he'd worked at the restaurant. He smelled buttery popcorn, cotton candy, and, of course, pizza, with the occasional stink bomb that came from being close to a bunch of sweaty kids. He walked past Laser Tag and the prize store, and finally stopped at the door of the new game attraction, Hide and Seek. A black-shadowed Bonnie the Rabbit stood beside the logo. Come find me if you can! It was printed under the title of the game. Toby slipped in his tokens, and the game door unlocked. He walked through the doorway, examining the details of the game as an instrumental beat played through the speakers. Inside, the room was sectioned off in parts of a town, with a railing that glided up and down the wall and ended behind board cutouts. There was a park that led to a store, a school, a police station, and of course, a pizza place. Each section had about three board cutouts that Bonnie could hide behind. There was a thin barricade posted around the wall so kids wouldn't mess with the game. The rules flashed above on a large screen hang hanging from the ceiling. Interesting. This reminds me of both, well, obviously Shadow Bonnie. I, I hope we get some lore, some lore on Shadow Bonnie, some insight on what Shadow Bonnie really is. Um, and also the, oh, what's it called? The maze in um, Curse of Dreadbear. It reminds me of that. I've completely forgotten what it's called, though. The Corn Maze. Something like that. It's the Corn Maze. Um, that one with the with the cutouts and, and you poke your head through while uh, Grim Foxy comes running at you. Anyway, that, that's just what it reminds me of. I'm just making connections here. The rules are simple. Find where Bonnie is hiding in three tries in under three minutes. Or lose the game. Welcome to Hide and Seek. Enter your name to try and find Bonnie and let's begin. A deep voice, oh, I thought it was a high voice. <laughs> deep voice bellowed out of a wall speaker. Toby cracked his knuckles. No problem, he murmured. He typed in his name as the current player. You're mine, rabbit. Here we go, Toby. A black, two-dimensional cutout of Bonnie glided along the railing on the wall. The room darkened to pitch black. Toby heard the quiet sound of Bonnie moving along the railing of the room. Three... Two, one, the lights flashed back on. The lights flashed back on. I don't think that's supposed to be printed twice. I think there's some formatting issues, sorry. Uh, Toby blinked. Bonnie was nowhere to be seen. He pulled the toothpick from his mouth and rolled it between his fingers. He bit his bottom lip as he assessed the hiding places. He could go anywhere in the game by hitting a button to see where Bonnie might be hiding. He put the toothpick back in his mouth and moved to the police station to hit the button at the desk. Sorry, no Bonnie here. Toby scanned around the room, rubbing his chin. Had to be the pizza place. He walked over and hit the button for the kitchen doors. Sorry, no Bonnie here. One more try. He moved to hit the button for the principal's office at the school. Uh-oh, you lose. Bonnie glided out of a jail cell at the police station. Better luck next time, Toby. Toby curled his lip. Not much to the game, but he still wanted to win. He looked up at the screen hanging from the ceiling. Somebody already snagged the top score by being the fastest time. Tom at 2.58. That's nothing. Toby turned when he heard the door lock, uh, door unlock behind him. Welcome to hide and seek. Enter your name and try to find Bonnie. And let's begin. A little kid walked in, sporting a Freddy Fazbear party hat. Hey, it's my turn now, he said, his bottom lip sti sticking out. Toby dug out more tokens and slapped them in the kid's hand. He grabbed the kid's shoulder, shoving him back out the door. I still got one more turn, he told him. Hey, no fair, it's my turn. Stop your whining, I'll be out in a minute. Toby slammed the door on the kid and went to type in his name again. 
Here we go, Toby. Bonnie glided out. The room blackened and the countdown began. He heard Bonnie move quietly. As soon as the lights flashed on, Toby ran to the store and per um, pushed the bakery counter. Sorry, no Bonnie here. He ran to the park and chose a tree. Sorry, no Bonnie here. Toby gritted his teeth and ran to the pizza place, pounding his palm on the arcade. Uh-oh, you lose. Bonnie glided out of the bushes at the park. Better luck next time, Toby. Toby spit out his toothpick on the floor as annoyance burned in his gut. He fisted his hands and stormed out the exit to start his shift. Stupid game. Toby walked into his house after work. He heard the television playing and he rolled his eyes. That meant Connor was home. Great. Dad worked the graveyard shift at a warehouse and wasn't home most nights, so usually it was just him and his brother. Toby plopped a box of leftover pepper um, of leftover pizza on the kitchen table, then dug out a piece of pepperoni. He was already irritated because he'd played hide and seek a few more times before he came home and still and still hadn't found the rabbit. The game wasn't that complicated. How hard could it be to find a hidden rabbit? What you, Tobes? Connor called out. Who else would it be? Oh, I, I read it. What you? It's it's that you. <laughs> that you, Tobes? Connor called out. Who else would it be? Toby walked to the front room and leaned against the wall. Yeah. Um, Connor was kicked back in Dad's recliner watching baseball. He wore a dirty button-up shirt stained with black grease. Grease was smeared on his cheeks and arms, only his hands were somewhat cleaner, with black oil under his nails. Connor turned to look at Toby and grinned. Beat me at any games? Beat me at any games yet, little brother? Connor wanted to know. Uh, gee, how did he know he'd ask? Toby bit into his pizza and chewed. Nope. Connor laughed. Didn't think so. Not gonna happen, ever. But it's flattering that you keep trying. Toby narrowed his eyes. Oh, it will happen. Connor lifted his eyebrows. Maybe when pigs fly, sucker. Toby crossed his arms against his chest. He wanted to tell Connor somebody else already had the first score on a new game at the pizza place, but he bit his lip. Nah, he just wanted to get the lead score first, and he didn't want his brother anywhere near Freddy's until Toby held first place. Toby pointed at him with his pizza slice. Pigs will be flying. You'll see, and you'll be the sucker, and I'll be the winner. Oh, please. Then you won't even know what to do with yourself except go cry in your room. Connor wasn't deterred. He leaned forward in the recliner. Oh, you mean like that time you beat my overall ho home runs during Little League? Or how about all those times you smashed me at bowling? Toby scowled. Just shut up, Connor. Oh, I know. You must mean your overall time for the mile run in PE class. You're such a real speedster, aren't you, Tobes? Toby pushed off the wall. I said, shut up. Connor's eyes widened. Oh, wait, you've never beaten me in anything. And you never will because you're the pitiful loser who can't win at anything. Toby saw red. He threw his pizza at his brother. Connor smiled in glee as he dodged the slice. And Toby launched himself at Connor in the recliner. He had a moment of satisfaction when he first hit his brother's gut. Connor grunted. Oh, you're going to pay for that. Connor hissed out. Fist flew. Toby was lifted, tossed on the floor. He hit the carpet. Breath rushed out of his mouth. His brother clocked him in the chin, then manoeuvred him into a strong arm around his neck. Toby's face heated. He was losing air. He trapped his brother's arm. His brother released him and shoved him to the side while Toby coughed. Shoulders heaving, Connor pointed a finger down at him. I always beat you at everything, idiot. When are you ever going to get that through your thick head? I will always win, and you will always lose like the loser you were born to be. Connor left the room, leaving Toby on the floor. Toby just lay sprawl sprawled on the floor, breathing hard, staring at the ceiling. Man, Connor is a <laughs> he's a speedrunner. He's a he's a dream. He's a, he's, a, he's such a dream. I bet it's revealed that Connor cheated. <laughs> uh, he found a cheat code. The next day, Toby studied a block of wood in the woodshop class, rubbing his chin with his forefinger. Buzz saws and drills sounded around him. The scent of freshly cut wood filled his nostrils. He was supposed to be working on a small cutting board project, but he had other ideas at the moment, like making rail blocks for hide and seek so that a rabbit can hide in some of the areas in the game. Yeah, it was cheating. He just didn't care. For once, he wanted to shove a winning score right in his brother's face. He felt tension grip his body inch by inch, just thinking about Connor. 
uh, how he always had to be number one at everything he did. How he always had to rub it in Toby's face. Well, he wasn't going to be a loser this time if it was the last thing he did. Everything had been a big competition with Connor as far back as Toby could remember. Connor always had to have the best score, the best grades, the biggest piece of cake. He had to be stronger than Toby in arm wrestling, beat him at boxing, and win one-on-one -on -one in basketball. He had to get the most attention from Dad and Mum when she'd been around. He'd been a star quarterback his junior varsity season until he'd banged up his knee and couldn't play well enough afterward. That had really messed up with his brother's head. Uh, Toby remembered him moping around the house for months. Toby had even felt bad for him for a little while, until Connor had gotten a job at Freddy's and went on an arcade game mission, defeating every high score in the place. He'd been obnoxious and unbearable ever since then. Now that Toby worked there, Connor held the ultimate, victory arc uh, the ultimate arcade victory over Toby nearly every day. It drove Toby freaking crazy. That was why Connor's reign was finally coming to an end. Determined, Toby got to work on the block of wood, cutting out squares that would soon be the perfect rail blocks for hide and seek. Mr. Pedrick walked by Toby's workstation. He adjusted his glasses and looked at Toby cutting out blocks. Those are too small for a cutting board, Toby. Yeah, I know. I'm getting to the cutting board next. Mr. Pedrick crossed his arms. The cutting board is your assignment now. It's due at the end of the period. How are you going to get it done in 30 minutes? You're a good kid, Toby. I know you can do better than this if you just try and put some effort into your projects. I'm starting the project right now. Irritated, Toby walked over to the wood table and picked up another piece of wood for the cutting board. When Mr. Pedrick walked away, he set the new piece of wood aside and continued with the rail blocks. Some things were more important and took priority over schoolwork like beating an annoying, ignorant, loud-mouthed brother. After Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and games closed that night, Toby inserted his co coins for a new round of hide-and-seek. There were only a couple of employees left cleaning up in the kitchen, and he'd snuck inside the game room near the end of his shift. The game voice welcomed him to the game. Before Toby entered his name, he walked over to a small barricaded fin fence that blocked the wall from players getting too close to the game and hopped over. From his sweatshirt, he dug out the small wooden blocks that he'd shaped to fit in the railing. He gave the blocks a good pound with his hand, wedging each wood piece into the rails to cut off access to the pool, uh, sorry, to the school, police station and the pizza place. Now the only places the rabbit could hide were the park and the store, which were right next to each other. Toby smiled and nodded. Now he would definitely win, and he'd get his name listed as first place. Oh yeah! Let's do this. <laughs> he couldn't wait to rub Connor's face in his win. He could see his brother now. His, set, his face would get all red, just like it did whenever something didn't go his way and he'd stormed off and hit a wall in the house like a big baby. Dad would yell at him to go up, cool off and then Dad would t look at Toby and roll his eyes. Toby snickered. It would be priceless. Toby hopped back over the small fence and ran to enter his name into the game. Here we go, Toby. Yeah. Here we go, rabbit. Bonnie glided out. The room blackened. Three. Toby tapped his foot as he waited for the lights to turn on. Two. One. As, the, as soon as the room brightened, he sprinted to the park and slapped on the side, slide. Sorry, no Bonnie here. He hit the tree. Sorry, no Bonnie here. Rattled, he hit the deli at the store. Uh-oh, you lose. Toby's jaw dropped in disbelief. His peppermint-flavoured toothpick fell to the floor. No freaking way. Bonnie glided from behind the cashier register at the store. Better luck next time, Toby. Toby's hands fisted as he growled loudly in frustration. You think you're funny, don't you, Rabbit? You think I'm a loser? Well, I'm not, you idiot. You are the loser, you'll see. He paced back and forth and tore the beanie from his head. His entire body vib vibrated with tension. I'm not going to lose another game to you. He rubbed his hands over his red head. Eh, he rubbed his hands over his head. Think think. He wanted to win. He needed to win. Suddenly, he whirled as a quick solution crossed his mind. Yes! He rushed out of the game room. A minute later, he inserted his tokens and came back in, carrying two metal chairs. He already had the store, the school, and pizza place covered. He wedged the back of the chairs into the railing to the park and the store. The bottom of the chairs leaned forward on the small fence. Welcome to hide and seek. Enter your name to try and find Bonnie, and let's begin.
Yeah, yeah, he muttered. Toby stood back, hands on his hips, looking at his handiwork. Everywhere was blocked. There was no way the rabbit could even hide at all. Ha! <laughs> Got you now, sucker. Who's the winner now? He rubbed his damp palms together as he rushed to input his name. He felt a sheen of sweat on his forehead and wiped it with the back of his hand. He felt jittery. Off. Like he couldn't keep still. He rolled his neck in a circular motion and cracked his knuckles. Here we go, Toby. The voice sang out. Bonnie glided out. The room blackened. Three. Toby's stomach took a sudden dive and his head went light. He almost felt like puking. Two. For one moment, a rush of quiet seemed to fill the room, as if all the air was sucked out of the area and his ears were about to pop. He felt a strange tickle at, the, at his back and shifted a shoulder to make it go away. Then all at once, sound rushed back into his ears. One. The lights flashed on. Toby blinked. He felt disoriented. Disoriented. Oh my god, I can't speak. <laughs> he felt disorientated. There we go. He rubbed his eyes and scanned the walls before him. Wait. Bonnie was gone. Toby's head swiveled left and right, even to the ceiling. There was no way the rabbit should be able to hide anywhere. What the heck? Where'd you go? He rushed to the small fence barricade and hopped over to the billboard cutouts, trying to peer inside the slight gap between the cutouts on the wall. The slots were empty. No, this wasn't right. His stomach his stomach was turning and his chest felt tight. Oh my gosh, this is annoying me that I can't speak. <laughs> he can... <t> <laughs> He continued to run to each cutout, peering behind the wooden displays. There was nowhere the rabbit could have gone. This didn't make any sense. Toby's heartbeat felt like a drum. Uh, a bead of sweat dripped down the side of his head. No, no, no. This wasn't fair. The stupid rabbit couldn't win. Heat flashed across his face. A burst of helplessness, energy, flared throughout his body. His breaths increased. He wasn't a loser. He wasn't a freaking loser. He ran to the chair he'd propped against the railing, picked it up and heaved it across the room. It smashed against a wall, denting a hole into the game's pizza place. He pulled out, he pulled at one part of the fence and tore it down. He stomped towards the broken barrier and stalked over to the other chair and threw it against the other wall. Uh, wall. He pulled down another section of the fencing, reached for the tree cut out at the park, and gritting his teeth, he pulled at it with all of his strength. It ripped off the wall as he crashed into the floor. Only a few pegs stuck out in its place. He threw the tree, got back to his feet, and ran to the police station, uh, tearing at the desk cut out. I always beat you at everything, idiot. When are you going to get through that, th that through your thick head? I will always win, and you will always lose like the loser you were born to be. He tugged and tore at everything he could get his hands on. He wasn't sure how long he went at it, tearing down, destroying. All he knew was that he had to be rid of this helpless feeling within him. This feeling of being weak and powerless. This pain that always seemed to be inside of him. He hated it. He needed it out. Gone. Finally, his body grew tired as he tripped on a piece of a cutout and fell on his ass. His sweat, uh, sweat? His chest was heaving up and down. Sweat covered his face. His hands were red and throbbing. He looked around at what he'd done and satisfaction filled him. Yeah, take that, he thought. He'd pretty much destroyed hide-and-seek. As he stared at the destruction, reality crashed down on him. He swallowed past the dryness in his throat. He scrubbed at his face with his hands, then continued to stare at the mess he'd created. He'd ruined a game that wasn't his. He was going to get in so much trouble. Frantic, he stood and grabbed the tree he'd torn from the wall. He quickly tried to reattach it to the pegs, but it was no use. It just crashed back to the floor. What did I do? He whispered. Then he did the only thing he could do. He ran out of the room. Toby opened his eyes, blinked. He was in the dark. He was lying face down on a cold metal table. Where was he? Bright lights flashed on above him and he squinted. He tried to sit up, but his hands were tied above his head. His legs were bound at his ankles and he couldn't move them. What the heck? Toby tried to lift his head a little. Hey, what's going on? Connor, are you messing with me? His voice seemed to echo inside the room. He looked around to see brick walls surrounding him. You're going to get busted for doing this. Someone shifted behind him. When no one answered, panic set in. Connor would have been blabbing his mouth by now. Hey, whoever you are, you better let me go. He jerked at his hands, but the rope just bit into his wrists. 
rubbing his skin raw. His heartbeats seemed to pound against the cold table beneath him. Then he spotted something dark in his peripheral vision. What do you want? He felt his shirt tugged from his back, then heard scissors cutting at it. Stop it! Leave me alone! Cold air hit his skin. He heard more movement, then something small bit into his back, like a needle. Ow! Don't touch me! The needle was pulled out, and then he felt his skin being tugged. What the heck are you doing to me? He jerked his head left and right, trying to see what was happening. Sweat pearled on his forehead. Again, he felt the needle push into his skin and then pull. Blood dripped down his back as the pain grew in intensity. Stop! You're hurting me! Please! I said stop! But whoever the dark figure was, he didn't speak and he didn't stop. Toby felt every prick and pull of the needle as realisation dawned. Someone was sewing something to his back. Oh my god, someone help me, he screamed, please. Toby jerked awake, he sat up in his bed, alert, heart pounding, breathing fast, he was disoriented, uh, oh my gosh, I can't say that word, <laughs> he was disoriented, oh no, he was, no, he was disoriented, oh, oh, <laughs> it was just a bad dream, the sunlight slanted through his window blinds, he was okay, he was home, what day was it? Was it time to go to school? Did he oversleep? He glanced at his alarm clock, 7.55am. He didn't set his alarm because it was Saturday, right? He rubbed his face, then glanced at the mirror mounted on his dresser across from his bed. His face was pale, and there was dark circles under his eyes. His brown hair stuck up in a crazy direction. He spotted his shadow on the wall behind him, and felt a ticklish feeling in his back. A shadow? Frowning, he tilted his head as he looked at it in the reflection of the mirror. That didn't seem right. There wasn't enough light from the window blinds for, for him to see his own shadow in his room. He shifted and leaned to his right. A second later, the shadow followed. Toby's eyes widened. Did his own shadow just delay in following him? Like Peter Pan. Uh, he leaned quickly to the left, but this time, the shadow moved quickly. He shook his head. Weird. He probably wasn't fully awake yet. Toby yawned and scratched his chest, then stretched his arms over his head. The shadow followed along, then he winced. His body was sore. Guilt from last night came crashing back. Dan, why did we have to mess up? Why did we have to mess up the game like that? What was Dan, his boss, going to say? Was he going to get caught? When he put his arms down, the shadow's arms were still up. Toby sucked in a breath and jumped from his bed. Looking at the wall behind his bed, he saw nothing, no shadow. He whipped his head towards the mirror and saw the shadow behind him. A chill radiated down his spine. He stepped closer to the large mirror on his dresser, watching as the shadow followed closely behind. The closer he got, the dark shadow followed. He peered into the mirror, and his mouth went dry. The shadow had rabbit ears. Ooh, okay. Toby spun around as if he could somehow catch the shadow, but every time he turned, there was nothing behind him. It was as if it could. It, uh, it was as if it would suddenly duck and hide somewhere in his room. Toby went to his bed and peered underneath. Just a bunch of dust and junk. He went to his closet and saw more junk, but even that didn't make sense. He glanced back in the mirror, and his shadow was still behind him. The only rabbit he could even think of was Bonnie, the rabbit from the game Hide and Seek. Toby froze for a moment, trying to comprehend what was actually happening. A rabbit shadow from a game attached to his back. He frowned. Wait, this couldn't be real. Suddenly, relief seeped through him. He slapped a hand to his forehead and barked out a laugh. I'm still dreaming. Duh. There was no way he could actually be seeing a shadow in the shape of a rabbit. This was some nightmare he was having because he was afraid he'd get caught for breaking the dumb game. Everything was fine, he'd assured himself. He yawned again and decided to go back to bed. When he would really wake up again, the only shadow he would see would be his own. He climbed back into bed and got underneath the covers. He looked once more into the mirror, seeing the shadow hovering behind him. Toby waved, and then the shadow waved with him. He lay down and closed his eyes, drifting off to sleep. Toby blink uh, blinked awake. His eyes were blurry. He rubbed his eyes and yawned, stretching his sore body. Even though he'd slept in, he felt exhausted. He sat up in bed, glancing into the dresser mirror. The shadow was still there. Fear punched his chest, and he pushed back against the wall, kicking the covers off of him. He sprang out of bed, hunched down, staring at the mirror. The shadow lurked just at his back. 
Toby reached behind him as if he could feel the shadow, but he only grabbed air. He swallowed hard as he stood straight, and the shadow did the same. He turned to his side to see if he could see the shadow closely, but for some reason the shadow stayed just behind him. Who are you? he asked the shadow. What do you want? The shadow didn't speak. Get away from me. Nothing happened. I said, go away. Nothing. Toby gritted his teeth as he paced back and forth, rubbing his hands hard through his hair. Okay, there was a shadow following him that wasn't his own shadow. How could this be happening? This was too freaking weird. He stopped again, leaning onto the dresser with his hands, and he peered into the mirror. Every time he saw the darkness behind him, a chill ran down his entire entire body, uh, making him shiver. Did his back feel heavier than usual? Toby was pretty sure it was because that thing was attached to him. What should he do? Well, he knew what he should do. He needed to get it off of him. But how could he make it go away? I can do this, he murmured. I can get it off of me. There has to be a way. Think. He bit his bottom lip and glanced at his wall in the reflection of the mirror, staring at it for a moment. He pushed away from the dresser and rubbed his chin as he studied the wall. Abruptly, he turned his back to the wall, sucked in a breath, then blew it out. Then he sucked in another breath and exhaled again. Squeezing his eyes shut, he ran backward and slammed against the bare wall. He'd knocked the wind from his mouth. His entire body vibrated. He lunged forward and then slammed hard, uh, slammed back hard against the wall again and again. Pain radiated uh, down his spine as he fell to the floor, wincing. A sheen of sweat sprang across his forehead as he crawled to the dresser, his back throbbing. He reached up and pulled himself to his feet, staring into the mirror. The shadow still lurked behind, uh, behind him. He threw himself helplessly onto his bed and screamed into his pillow. Nervous and bruised, Toby dressed, avoiding the mirror. He left his room and went to the kitchen. The feeling that someone was was at his back wouldn't go away. It was like he was being watched. He felt stalked, trapped. There was a pile of dishes in the sink and the scent of burnt bacon and eggs. Whose turn was it to do the dishes? Probably his, but he didn't care. Toby turned and stepped into the front room. His dad was in shorts and a t-shirt, kicked back in his recliner, blurry-eyed and drinking coffee. Toby swallowed hard and cracked his knuckles. Hey, dad. Dad grunted and looked over at Toby. Morning, Tobes. Morning. Toby's hands were shaking. He fisted them into a tight grip. Um, Dad, you see anything different about me? His dad squinted at him, looking up and down. Look the same to me. You do something different? He scratched at the scruff on his chin as he studied him. You finally grown some hair above your lip? Toby shook his head right away. No, just asking if you could see anything out of the ordinary. Something that's not supposed to be there? Just then, Connor strolled in. Don't worry, Tobes. You're still the same loser. Nothing's changed. Shut up, Connor, he said, but without his usual heat. Connor reached out and rubbed Toby's head. Toby shoved him away. Neither of you see my shadow? Toby asked them. Really? Connor made a face. What are you talking about, idiot? He stretched his arms out. A shadow, idiot. Do you see it or not? Can't you answer a simple question? Connor looked around Toby, shaking his head as he walked to the kitchen. You got problems, Tobes. Toby rounded on his dad, who just ignored him and continued to watch sports. How could they not see that there was this weird darkness following him around? Was he still dreaming? No, he was definitely wide awake. His back was still hurting from slamming against the wall. Was he the only one who could see it? Did that make him crazy? Had Connor finally driven him nuts? He went to his dad leaned toward him. Dad, feel my head. Dad smelled of coffee and cigarettes. His eyes were a little bloodshot. Dad sighed. Tobes, what's the matter with you? He put his hand on his forehead. No, you're good, son. So don't get any ideas about skipping school, all right? Then I start getting a bunch of calls and texts from the school while I'm trying to sleep before my shift. Toby straightened. I'm not. The phone rang. Connor answered. Yeah? Yeah, hold on. Hey, idiot, it's for you. Work. Toby's gut flipped. Oh, no, 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 no. He walked over to the corner as he snickered at him. Toby snatched the phone away from him. 
Yeah. Hello, Toby, it's Dan. Can you come to work? I need to talk to you about something. Very important. Toby scratched his neck. Um, yeah, sure. All right, see you soon. I don't want to restart my updates. <laughs> uh, or, or whatever that said. Um, sorry. Um, Connor widened his eyes. Ooh, Toes is in trouble. What did you do now? Toby schooled his expression to innocence, which was kind of hard. Nothing. Connor shook his head. Dan never calls on employees unless they mess up royally. What did you do? Forget to lock up something? Or you broke something and didn't tell him? Toby narrowed his eyes at his brother. Did he know something? I didn't mess up. Uh, he's probably calling me in to tell me what a fantastic job I've been doing. So much better than you ever did. Yeah, right. I do everything better than you. Even that stupid job. Holy cow! Dad yelled from the front room. Base is loaded, babes, baby. <laughs> Boys, get in here. This game is getting good. Connor lost interest in Toby and strode into the front room, joining Dad. What I tell you, they got this game easy. I always pick the winning team, right, Dad? Dad laughed. You do, son. You do. Toby rolled his eyes and walked back to his room. He realised he wasn't hungry at all. He really couldn't argue with his brother about him doing a better job at Freddy's at the moment. He'd messed up royally by breaking hide-and-seek. He didn't know what was going to happen when he talked to Dan. He looked into the mirror, and the shadow lurked behind him like a dark ghost that wouldn't leave him alone. He shuddered. He looked at his hands, still shaking. This whole thing was freaking him out. Toby slapped a beanie on his head and took a deep breath in an attempt to cal calm his nerves. He had to face Dan about hide and seek. Then he'd figure out what to do about the shadow. Dan lifted his beefy arm to encompass the entire disaster area of hide and seek. Can you believe it? I just opened this game and now it's destroyed. Dan was built like a bull, all big chested with meaty arms, but with short skinny legs. He was an okay boss and was always cool to Toby. That was why Toby felt pretty bad for messing up his game. Toby stared at the chaos of the room with wide eyes. The game looked even worse than he remembered. The screen was dead now. Dan must have shut it down. Nearly all the cutouts were torn from the wall. Only pegs were left sticking out as placeholders. Most of the cutouts were broken. Some split totally in half. There were a few dents in the walls. Um, sorry. Ah, uh, <laughs> I, I can't believe it, Toby said, cracking his knuckles. He couldn't believe he'd done all of this damage by himself. Dan turned to Toby eyeing him with intensity. Do you have any idea who did this? Toby shook his head as guilt weighed heavy on his conscience. No, Dan. I don't know who could have done this. Definitely not me. Uh, you didn't see any swans suspicious messing around last night. You checked the bathroom stools, right? The play area? No one was hiding anywhere after closing? Yeah, I did the routine check like you always tell me. No, I didn't see anyone suspicious. Dan ran a ha hand down his thick beard. Really ticks me off, you know. I put good money into this place for people to enjoy and this is how I'm repaid? Ticks me off. Yeah, I bet. When I was a kid, they didn't have places like these. Kids played outdoors and just went and had a pizza. But I like the idea of families coming together to eat and play together, have a party. This place isn't much, but it's a dream of mine. So it really upsets me when something like this happens. Dan sighed. Well... I gotta get to the tech. I gotta get the technician in here and see what he can do. Thanks for coming in, Toby. Toby nodded. Let me help you clean up. Dan placed his hands on his hips. Sure, but I gotta keep all the parts for insurance. The police already took pictures. Toby felt a clinch in his gut. The police? Yeah, I had to report this as a break-in and vandalism. They may need to ask you some questions. They're talking to everyone who worked last night. Toby swallowed hard and nodded. Sure, no problem. If you could pick up the big pieces and set them in a pile and sweep up the small stuff, that would be helpful. Sure. Thanks, Toby. You're a good kid. Dan stomped out of the game room, muttering something under his breath. Toby's shoulders slumped as he started to clean up the floor. He piled the, di uh, the big cutouts against one wall. When he picked up the cutouts of the bushes, he saw his beanie from last night. His heart skipped a beat as he looked behind him to see if anyone had come into the room. He quickly sw swiped it up and stuck it into his back pocket. Suddenly, his head jerked to the railing. The wooden blocks he'd made were still jammed inside. 
he picked up a long piece of broken wood and started to pry them out of the rail one by one. Heart pounding, he hurriedly picked up the three pieces from the floor, then stashed them in his sweatshirt. Then, taking a breath, he continued to clean up his mess. Toby felt awful the rest of the weekend. He mostly stayed in his room. He put an old sheet over his mirror. Even though he knew the shadow was still there, he didn't want to have to look at it. Every time he did, his pulse fluttered and he started to shake because it wasn't supposed to be there. It was like this scary, dark, hidden secret. He ate almost nothing on Sunday and barely slept. He didn't talk to his dad or his brother. Dad knocked on his door to check on him, but he told him he was just tired. He, ye he heard them yelling at some game on the television. Dad, Connor and Toby were pretty close, but Dad and Connor had their obsession with sports that they always shared. Dad with was either working a lot or sleeping, but when he wasn't, he was hanging out with Connor, watching sports and having a good old time. Since Toby wasn't that into sports, that didn't leave much for Dad and Toby time. Toby guessed he'd been closer to his mum, but he wasn't sure since she left one day when Toby was about five and Connor seven. He had a vague memory of Dad bringing them home from Connor's little league practice and mum just being gone. Dad had called for her and then Connor ran around the house looking for her. Dad had found a letter on the kitchen table. Connor asked what it was and wanted to know where mum was. But Dad just read the letter, then crumpled it in his hand and walked away. That night was the first of hundreds of frozen dinners together. No explanation to Toby and Connor was given about mum, so they just continued on with life as if mum had never been around. Maybe that was when Connor really started attempting to be the best at everything. Toby wasn't sure. His brother could have just been born with a screw loose. Toby skipped school on Mon... Oh, mon? <laughs> Monday? Toby skipped school on Monday, but he did decide to go to his shift at Freddy's that afternoon. He didn't know if he could pull that shift off. His energy was spent, his back felt tight and heavy, and all he wanted to do was lie down and go to sleep. He walked into Freddy's and Reggie met him in the arcade. He had a slice of pizza in his hand. Dude, you look gnarly. He chomped on his pizza. Toby just shrugged as he walked past him. Whoa, what's with the shadow? Looks intense. Toby's eyes widened as he whirled. He rushed to Reggie and grabbed the front of his shirt with both hands. You can see it? Take it easy. Uh, yeah. Your shadow is way dark, dude. He bit into his slice and chewed it in front of Toby's face. I can't get rid of it. It's freaking me out. Reggie lifted his eyebrows. I bet. How'd you get it anyway? Toby let him go and jerked his shoulder. Dunno. Just happened. A freak thing. I get it, man. It's personal. Reggie smoothed his shirt with his other hand. That really sucks, you gotta deal with it. Yeah, but you're the only one who said they've seen it. Reggie nodded, and his red curls moved with emotion. Totally see it. Do you see the ears? Reggie frowned. Huh? Toby shook his head. Never mind. How can you even see it? Reggie shrugged. People say I see things differently. Toby stared at him when he didn't elaborate. Whatever. I think it's... Reggie took another bite of pizza. What? I think it's from a game I, uh cheated. Oh yeah, what game? Toby wasn't sure he could tr truly trust him. He was a regular at Freddy's and he could tell Dan whatever he told him. Doesn't matter, I just need to get rid of it. I can't keep walking around with this thing at my back, it's weird. Well if I were you, I'd try to get that thing off of me, like yesterday. Reggie sh shuddered. T looks totally creepy, dude. Just seeing Reggie's reaction made him shudder in return. Like, try what? I don't know how to make it go away. What do you think I should do? Dude, you're a gamer. Use your imagination. I've watched you for weeks attempt to beat your brother's score on nearly every game in this arcade. That takes fire, you know. Where's that fire now? Toby stiffened, cracked his knuckles. I got fire. Reggie nodded. Then go get it, bro. That night, Toby thought about what Reggie said, and he felt inspired. He wasn't defeated yet. He could beat the shadow and get him off. He could freaking win this game. He made a list. Ideas to remove shadow. Slam it off, didn't work. Scrub it off, drown it off, burn it off, forget that. Or cut it off, maybe. Oh god, another in the flesh. Um, Toby went into the garage. He searched around the clutter for the car wash scrubber on a stick. No one had washed their cars in forever, but Toby knew the scrubber was still around somewhere. It has 
thick br bristles that might scrub the shadow right off his back. It could totally work, maybe. He was pretty much willing to try anything to get this thing off of him. He kicked at boxes, making a path around the garage, uh, shoved the lawnmower and kicked a deflated football. Holy heck, he jumped when a little mouse skitt skittered across the floor. He needed to remember to tell his dad to buy some mouse traps. He finally found the scrubber stuck in a corner with an old wash bucket. He grabbed the scrubber and tried to reach it over his back, but the stick was too long. He looked around and found a rusted saw in his dad's old toolbox. He leaned the stick on the washer with his left hand and started sawing away at the stick with his right. The blade was dull and it took a few minutes, but a part of the stick finally broke off, dropping to the floor. Toby lifted the scrubber in his hand and felt the bristles with his fingers. Yeah, nice and thick. You'll do. He tipped the brush onto his back and gave a rub. It would definitely work. Determined, he took off his shirt and laid it on the dryer. Then he took a breath, grabbed the stick with both hands and started scrubbing his back. Hard. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> oh god, this is weird. Uh, he scrubbed, wincing. The bristles bit into his skin. Scraping, scratching. See how you like that, he muttered. He scrubbed and, and he scrubbed at his back, feeling the skin peel away to rawness. Oh, Jesus hurts. He scrubbed till he felt like his back was burning and he couldn't take it anymore. Trembling, he dropped the scrubber and fell to his knees, sucking air through his teeth. His vision dimmed and he blinked. Please let this work, please, he whispered. Exhausted and in pain, he grabbed his shirt and carefully slid it over his head. Then he got to his feet and stumbled back into the house and to his room. Toby leaned against his dresser and slowly pulled off the sheet covering the mirror. He looked awful. His eyes were wild. His brown hair was stuck on his forehead with sweat. His face was pale and his skin looked dry. He lifted his gaze to look behind him. The shadow loomed at his back and it seemed to be bigger, even darker. It moved as Toby's shoulders heaved. No, he said. It hadn't worked. He may not have gotten the shadow off his back, but he apparently ticked it off. He could feel its anger, its darkness, more, intent or more intensely. Feeling the emotions was like being squeezed into too, too small a box, and the sides were closing in, suffocating him. Toby pounded a fist on his dresser. I hate you, he said. I hate you. Then he felt himself falling, and everything went black. Toby jerked awake and hit his knee on something hard. Ow. Saliva drooled from his mouth, and he wiped it away with the black back of his hand. He heard knocking. He lifted his head and looked around. Clothes were littered around him. He was on the floor of his bedroom at the foot of his bed. He'd hit his knee on the dresser. He'd slept on the floor all night. More knocking on his door. Toby, get up. Dad said you have to go to school today. Connor bellowed through the door. All right, I'm up, he yelled, and settled his head back on the carpet. He heard his brother walk away. Toby slowly sat up, wincing. His head felt like it wanted to fall off. <laughs> his back burned as if on fire. He pushed himself to his feet and the room spun. Oh, dang. He grabbed on to the dresser to keep from falling again and waited for the room to stop spinning. Even though he wasn't hungry, he had to eat something to keep up his energy. He didn't care to look in the mirror. He knew the shadow was still there. He could feel its weight, could sense the darkness looming over him like a threat. Toby managed to shower first without uh, falling over, but the spray hurt too badly, so he didn't let the water run from down his back. He brushed his teeth, ignoring the shadow as it followed along in the bathroom mirror. He dressed and walked into the kitchen. His brother sat at the table eating cereal, waffles and two bananas. Connor stopped mid-chew when he spotted Toby. You're really sick? Toby didn't care to answer. You look bad. What's the matter with you? Toby just shook his head as he got out his cereal and milk and then a bowl and spoon. Why aren't you talking, Tobes? He shrugged. Maybe you should stay home another day. Toby looked at his brother in surprise. Where are all the stupid remarks, all the put-downs? I'm going. When Toby finally answered, Connor seemed satisfied. All right, but if you got the flu, keep your distance. He wolfed down his cereal, waffles and both bananas. He threw his dishes in the sink, gave a gnarly burp and said, later. Then he walked out of the kitchen. A moment later, the front door slammed shut. Toby ate a few sp spoonfuls of cereal, but after a few minutes, he felt it coming right back up. He 
He ran to the garbage and puked. His body shuddered with spasms. He managed to straighten with a hand to his stomach. If he didn't know better, the shadow seemed to be sucking the life out of him. The idea of something overpowering him annoyed the heck out of him. He clenched his fists. You are not going to win. Toby felt like a zombie at school. He walked the halls, slow and tired. Kids stared at him as he passed, then looked away. Toby stared back, not caring about anything. Teachers didn't care what he did anyway. He'd never been a star student. In fact, he just went through the motions of school. Dad never cared about his grades. He just wanted him to pass and graduate, so that's, so that's what Toby set out to do. He went to school, did the homework he could, skipped the assignments that couldn't make any sense, and he got passing grades. Sometimes, barely passing, but credits were credits. When Toby came in as a freshman, and the teachers discovered he was Connor Billings' little brother, they'd smiled big and asked him questions. Connor was so confident, so conversational, great at sports. He did his best at schoolwork and extracurriculars. A real go-getter. Little brother Toby had to be the same. It ran in the family, right? Wrong. They found out quickly, Toby wasn't very outgoing. He never really made friends or joined any clubs. He didn't care to try to, to try his best like Connor had. Uh, Toby did what he had to do to walk the line up to his senior year. Soon the teachers had stopped being friendly and started getting annoyed. He'd get looks of disapproval, uh, and most of all, he got the looks of disinterest and dismissal, like he didn't matter to them. Well, newsflash, the feeling was mutual. Toby detoured to the restroom before he ambled to his locker. There was a kid with headphones on messing with his hair in the mirror. He was bopping up and down. Toby used the restroom, and when he turned around to wash his hands, um, the kid froze, staring into the mirror. His mouth hung open in shock. The kid pointed to Toby, or more likely to the shadow behind him. Dang it, he must be able to see the shadow in the mirror too. Toby cracked his knuckles. Hey look. The kid spun around to look at Toby, frowned, then looked back in the mirror. Before Toby could say more, the kid booked it out of the bathroom as if he was running from a fire, or more like a monster from a horror movie. Okay, later. Toby muttered as he washed his hands. Toby had gym class for the first period, which he realised was perfect for his next step in his plan. Today his class was scheduled to play basketball. Mr. Dillon Hall, a tall, bald man in a bright tracksuit, blew his whistle. He cocked his hip and leaned his clipboard against it, the, his big stomach. All right, line up for roll call. Toby, dressed in shorts and a t-shirt, lined up with the other kids. He'd been careful to stay away from any mirrors in the locker room. He just hoped he didn't see that scared kid again. That was all... Wait. Oh yeah. That was all he needed. For a weird rumour to start going around school. A girl walked up and handed Mr. Dillenhall a note. What now? Didn't Mr. Dillenhall muttered, then skimmed the note. Fine, go have a seat. He rolled his eyes dramatically before getting to roll cool. Billings? Toby raised his hand when Dylan Hall looked up from his chart. Oh, right. Oh, okay. For goodness sake, let's put some effort in today, Billings. Come on, kid. Uh, Toby just crossed his arms as Mr. Dylan Hall continued taking attendance, occasionally making snide remarks to the other kids. Dylan Hall's such a jerk, uh, murmured Tabitha Bing. Kids called her Tab for short. Toby glanced at her, then turned away. She was sort of an outcast and liked to rebel against the system. She had a nose piercing and wore a lot of black. Occasionally she started petitions to get things changed around the school. She'd attempted to run for student body president a couple of times, but she'd lost to popular kids. She was always blowing little things out of proportion, in Toby's opinion. Since she, she, since, eh, since she seemed to be the total opposite of Toby, he usually steered clear of her. You don't talk much, do you, Billings? He, she asked him. Toby turned to her and this time shrugged. Don't got much to say at school. She lifted her eyebrows and smiled. Unlike me, you mean. You said it, not me. All right, Mr. Dinan Hall barked out. Let's break into your groups and play some basketball. I want to see some serious effort on the court. None of those, oh, my chest hurts or I twisted my ankle excuses people. I want real athletes on the court. Let's go. 
As the groups gathered and started their games, Toby checked out of his group to use the restroom. He left the gym, glancing over his shoulder. No one was around in the hallway. He detoured to the high school pool, which luckily was free for the period. The strong scent of chlorine filled his nostrils as he scanned his clear water. He couldn't pound the shadow off of him, nor could he scrub it off. Now it was time for more intense measures. Hope you can swim, he said out loud to the shadow, or not. He looked around for something heavy, but couldn't find anything in the pool area to weigh him down. He jogged to the weight room. There were some kids in there, lifting weights, but Toby managed to sneak in and grab a heavy weight vest. Back at the pool, he slipped it in onto his shoulders and buckled it at his chest. He bounced on the balls of his feet and felt the rest. Yeah, the vest was a good weight to sink him to the bottom and keep him there. He walked back to the pool and stared at the still water. He bit his bottom lip. Not that he'd admit to anyone, but he was a little scared. He could swim, but he wasn't used to holding his breath for a long time. He paced back and forth along the deep end of the pool. Come on, you can do this. What could go wrong? Nothing really. And hey, this could really work. You could be free of the shadow and get on with your life. He finally stopped pacing and stood in front of the pool. After taking a deep breath, he pinched his nose and jumped into the deep end. Toby slowly sank to the bottom of the pool. Even though the school claimed it was heated, the water still felt ice cold. Yeah, that's, that, that, <laughs> that's what it's like in schools. Uh, with the vest holding him down, he sat at the bottom and waited. He blinked, looking around the pool area. He could feel the chlorine sting his eyes. He wondered how long he could hold his breath, and he wondered if the shadow could hold its breath at all. Did shadows even breathe? He guessed he'd find out. This has to work, he thought. He couldn't live forever with this darkness at his back. Not only would it drive him crazy, but it would be a constant reminder that he was a failure, a loser. I will always win, and you will always lose like the loser you are born to be. No, he couldn't live like this forever. Too fast, it felt like his lungs were squeezing closed, so he pulled at the buckle to realize, uh, so to re release the vest. This was all the time he could manage holding his breath. Hopefully, it was enough to drown the shadow off of him. But when Toby pinched the release, the buckle wouldn't unlatch. He tried to press the buckle to detach it again, but it wouldn't let go. A surge of anxiety shot through him. Toby jerked at the buckle, trying to pull it apart. He had the urge to open his mouth to breathe. Panic clawed at him as adrenaline flooded his system. He pushed himself from the floor with his feet, but the, vet, the weight of the vest pulled him back down. He pushed up again, uh, paddling his arms, kicking his legs, trying to swim to the top. But he was too weak from not eating much the last couple of days. He sank back to the bottom, clawing at the vest. Oh no, somebody help me. Help! There was a splash in the pool above him. Someone, someone swam towards him. Toby couldn't fight it anymore. He opened his mouth and swallowed water as the person pulled him by his vest to the top. Toby kicked with his legs to help get the two of them to the top. He broke through the surface, gagging up water. Water and snot dripped from his nostrils. The person helped hook his arm onto the edge of the pool. He coughed and sucked in much needed air. His lungs burned his entire body shuddering with each breath. Toby opened his eyes to see a drenched Tabitha Bing in the pool beside him. She was hanging on uh, the side of the pool with one arm. His eyes stung, and he pressed his fingers into them. What the heck were you doing? She snapped at him. Toby pushed hair out of his eyes, breathing hard. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Well, it better be a good enough reason for me not to report you to the principal, jerkwad. She pulled herself over to the top of the ledge. Water streamed from her soaked PE clothes. Toby tried to climb out as Tabitha pulled his vest, struggling to get him onto the platform. His body felt like dead weight between his drenched clothes and vest. With both of them playing, they managed to extract Toby from the pool. Toby rolled to his back and Tabitha fell to the platform beside him. For a skinny guy, you weigh a ton. She got to her feet and looked down at him. Water drops streamed down her arms and legs. Meet me at the soccer field at lunch or I'm going straight to the office to report you. Toby coughed. It's not really your business. I just saved your life. I'm making it my business. So which is it? Are you meeting me or am I going straight to the office? Toby lifted a hand and let it drop. Yeah, fine. 
I'll be there. I wasn't trying to hurt myself, Toby said grudgingly to Tabitha. They sat together on the soccer field bleachers during lunch break. It was a nice day, but a breeze kept pushing clouds over the sun every so often, making it a little cold. I hate those days. <laughs> Toby was still chilled from the pool experience, so he hustled inside his sweatshirt. Tabitha's hair was black and pulled away from her freckled face. Normally she wore makeup, but the pool water must have washed it all off. She was eating a sandwich that smelled like peanut butter. Then why the weighted vest? I was trying to stay down for as long as I could, but the buckle got stuck and I couldn't re release it or swim up fast enough. Toby cracked his knuckles. So, um, thanks for helping me out. Oh, you mean the saving your life thing? She waved her hand. All in a day's work. You're a pretty strong swimmer. My parents always said I was born to swim. I've been going to junior lifeguard camp forever. She shrugged. Why did you want to stay down at the bottom of the pool for so long anyway? Toby shook his head. How could he tell her he was trying to drown a shadow attached to the back, uh, attached to his back and that it hadn't worked? When he went in the locker room to change, he saw in the mirror that it was still there behind him, more intense and scarier than before. Here, have some of my lunch. You look like you need it, she said, handing him half of her sandwich. He put a hand to his gut. Now, nah, my stomach is upset. It's just some bread and peanut butter. Try it. Toby accepted the half sandwich and took a small bite. It was gooey in his mouth, but he was able to get it down. It seemed he could keep it down as well, he realised with relief. Why did you follow me? Toby asked her. She ducked her head and shrugged. You looked, I don't know, like you could use a friend. Toby didn't have anything to say to that. What does needing a friend look like? You wouldn't believe me if I told you, she said to him. What? That's what you said at the pool. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. What did you mean by that? Toby wasn't sure why, but he had the urge to throw caution to the wind and tell her everything. He wanted to tell someone because to keep all this all to himself stressed him out. Yeah, Reggie could actually see the shadow, but Toby hadn't wanted to tell Reggie everything. Maybe it was time to get it all off his chest. Staring down at her half sandwich, he started to tell Tabitha about hide and seek how he cheated the game and broke it, how the shadow was now attached to him and how he couldn't seem to get rid of it. For some reason, he felt she could handle the bizarre truth, that she wouldn't run off and tell someone he was crazy. It was somewhat liberating to finally unload the entirety of this crazy secret to someone else. He felt himself exhale in relief. Who knew keeping in such a secret was so exhausting? That sounds completely and utterly terrifying, she said and looked at and looked behind him. I can't see it. Toby nodded. I only see it in a mirror. For real? He nodded. Yeah. You believe me? It actually sounds too crazy to be made up. I know you believe it and that's all that matters to me. People deal with their own darkness in different shapes and forms. Okay, so she didn't completely believe him, but Toby understood. He couldn't even believe it, and he looked at it every day in the mirror. It was just a relief to get it all out and for her not to tell him he was crazy. And you thought you could drown it? How would that how did that work out for you? I'm just trying everything I can. It didn't work anyway. Have you told your mum or dad? It's just my dad. Tried to tell him and my brother, but they didn't understand what I was talking about. They couldn't see it either. But you've told me. And Toby sighed. I don't know why. She nodded. Sometimes it's easier to tell a stranger. I get it. So why did you cheat the game? Toby picked up the sandwich. Have you ever felt like you're never good at anything? Well, yeah, you can't be good at everything. No, he said at her. Good at anything. At all. Like a total loser. She shook her head. No, and you're not a loser. His lips curved in a sarcastic smile. Right. Have you not seen the way the teachers look at me? Like Dylan Hall? I'm not worth their time. Look, life is what you make it. You can't think like that. I don't think like that. I feel it. It doesn't matter anyway. I wanted to win and I thought that the only way I could was by cheating. It was stupid. She didn't say anything to that and instead pulled a small circular mirror from her bag. Okay, let's see it. Toby shook his head, scooting away from her. No way. She waved the mirror. Come on, why not? Because it's bad. Really bad. You don't even understand how bad. She stared at him. I can handle it. He stared at her with wide eyes. I can't even handle it. Okay, fine, you don't have to show me. She clipped the mirror back. So what are you going to do about it? 
Toby stared out at the soccer field, but he wasn't really seeing it. I'm going to beat it. What other choice do I have? They sat a few minutes in silence before Tabitha said, Let me see your phone. He glanced at her. Why? Just let me see it, she said, annoyed. Toby handed her his phone. She called a number and her phone rang. Then she typed something into his phone and handed it back. I added myself as a contact. As a contact, you know, if you ever need me to save you again, Toby actually cracked a real smile. Okay, thanks. Toby went home after school. Usually, he was starving by the time he strolled into the kitchen, but today he felt different, nervous, agitated, and he definitely had a serious loss of appetite. He grabbed a banana when his phone alerted him with a text from Tabitha. Hey, I know an excellent counselor you can talk to. No way. Okay, fine. Toby shook his head and clicked off the phone, but he couldn't help smiling a little. Tabitha was kind of cool. She took in everything he told her and didn't look at him weird. It was cool to have a new friend, not that he'd tell her that. Toby walked to a few. Uh, Toby talked to a few kids at school, but he wouldn't call them friends. He used to have a best friend named Manny, but he moved away with his family when Toby was in middle school. Since then, Toby kind of shut himself from other kids. Maybe it was time to open up again. Just to keep up his energy, he attempted to eat the banana. He got about half of it down before he felt like gagging. His head jerked up when a knock sounded at the front door. Who could that be? He answered the door to a clean-cut police officer with brown skin, short buzzed hair and a moustache. Toby swallowed hard. He still had the half-eaten banana in his hand. I'm looking for Toby Billings, he said. Th th that's me. Toby adjusted the beanie on his head. I'm Officer Jimenez. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. I'm Officer Jim, Toby. I'm here about the break-in and vandalism at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Games. Dan Harbour sa stated that you worked there and you were on shift that evening. He gave me your address. Uh-huh. Officer Jim had a small notebook and pen in his hand. Can you walk me through your shift that evening? Toby looked at his banana. Well, um, I... Vacuumed the carpet in the main party room and arcade, swept up in the bathrooms, wiped down tables, put up chairs, picked up trash from the floor, my regular stuff. What time did you end your shift? Mr. Harbour said you must have forgotten to write on your timesheet when you left. Toby scratched his neck with his free hand. Um, yeah, I was off at 10pm. At uh, 10? 11pm. I must have forgotten to sign out. Yeah, because I'd run out. Officer Jim wrote something down in the notebook. What time did you last see the game before it was vandalized? Um, well, after closing. Wait, should I have said that? So around 10pm? He nodded. Yep, I think so. There were no signs of a break in, Toby. Did you notice anyone hanging around who wasn't supposed to be there after closing? He blew it out of breath, shook his head slowly. Nope, no one. Same thing I told Dan. I checked the stools in the play area where kids tend to hide. Officer Jim looked directly into Toby's eyes. Toby, I want you to be completely honest with me. Yeah, okay. Did you vandalise the game hide and seek? What? I have to ask. You were the last one to see the game. You were working in the restaurant near the time of the crime. Everyone else was in the kitchen. You didn't sign out at the end of your shift. Maybe you were in a hurry because you'd vandalised the game. Maybe you were upset with your boss or someone. I've seen it happen before. And you didn't want to get into trouble, so you ran. Is this? Is that how it happened? Toby stepped back. No, it wasn't me. Yes, it was. Okay, he said sternly. That's all for now. Let Mr. Harbour know if you, if you remember anything else, or if you want to tell him anything else. Yeah, okay. Officer Jim gave a nod of his head. Have a good day. Toby nodded in return. He closed the door, still tense. He wondered if the officer believed him. It didn't sound like it. It sounded like he thought Toby did it. He wondered if he was going to get caught. Toby scrubbed a hand down his face. He had too many things to focus on. He was trying his best to figure out how to be free of the shadow. He also had to worry if he was going to get caught for breaking hide and seek. One thing at a time, please. He walked into the kitchen and threw the half-eaten banana in the garbage, then detoured into the front room. Besides, his dad's recliner was a small tray table with a lighter and an ashtray. He grabbed the lighter and flipped it, but it didn't light. He shook the lighter and flicked it again. This time, the flame lit. He bit his bottom lip, 
staring at the small flame. Maybe. He released the igniter, then shook his head, muttering, no freaking way. He tossed the lighter back on the tray. Was that a cop at the door? Toby jumped and whirled toward his dad. Dad, you scared me. I didn't know you were home. Where's your car? Getting a tune-up. I took the day off. Why the cop? What did he want with you? Toby cracked his knuckles. Um, there was a break-in at Freddy's. Just a routine, questioning the employees who were, the, who were there that night. Are you sure that's all it was? Toby blinked. Yeah, why wouldn't I be? You're not in any kind of trouble with breaking the law. No, Dad. But he was in trouble. Dad nodded, sat in with his recliner, and turned on the television. Toby walked away, then turned around to stare at his dad. He wanted to tell him the truth. He wanted to tell him that he cheated the game and destroyed it in anger. That the game that had somehow attached to him and followed him home. He wanted to tell him so his dad could help him. So he could do what parents were supposed to do and help their kids when they were in trouble. Not just go through the motions of life like everything was okay when nothing was okay. Not, pret not to pretend as if he ever had a wife. Um, what? Oh yeah, as if he never had a wife. And Toby and Connor never had a mom. Not to pretend as if he had two happy sons who never called each other names or fought with their fists. As if life was all about working for a paycheck and watching sports. Dad? Yeah, Tobes? Dad said, not taking his eyes off the television. Why didn't mum leave us? Dad didn't move his head from the screen. He didn't even flinch from the unexpected question. Toby wondered, when was the last time he ever saw his dad express any emotion other than excitement or disgust from watching sports? His dad was pretty much the mellow type. Toby had never seen him get seriously angry other than to yell at the refs on television. When he told Connor or Toby something, it was all very calm and rational. Maybe it was a bonus to have a parent who didn't yell at you or scold you. A minute passed as he waited for an answer from his dad, then two minutes. After five minutes, he realised he wasn't going to get an answer. He didn't know if it was because his dad didn't have one, or if he didn't feel Toby could handle the truth. Toby left the room to get ready for work. Toby kept up with his, with his regular routine and went in an hour before his shift to play games in the arcade. When he arrived, he noticed a hide-and-seek door propped open with a sign that said, that said, out of order. Curious about hide-and-seek, he slid his hands inside the pockets and walked inside the game room. There was a tall, skinny guy standing by the control box. He had a laptop in his arms and seemed to be rebooting the game. His hair was blonde and spiky and he wore thick framed glasses. Hey, Toby said to the guy. How's it going? All right, he said, eyeing him. You know the game's out of order. You supposed to be in here? Toby cleared his throat. Yeah, well, I work here. Gotta start my shift soon. The tech guy seemed to relax a little. Well, truthfully then, I'm not doing so good. Hide and seek here won't reboot. It says it's rebooting, but once it starts again, it goes back to the previous game every time. Must be some sort of wiring issue. It's stuck? Yeah, stuck in the game mode with the last player. Uh, some kid named Toby. All the blood seemed to rush out of Toby's head. He felt faint. Really? Can you just shut it down and restart it? Normally. Yeah, but something's off. I'm telling you, it won't stop the game. Never seen anything like it. Must be defunct. Dan ain't going to hear, like to hear that. Not after he found out whoever tore up the game also took the rabbit. What? Bonnie the rabbit, the character, the black cutout rabbit for the game is gone. Whoever messed up the game took the rabbit right off the wall like some kind of souvenir. I can't believe it. Probably stuck in their room for, or threw darts at it or something. Kids these days. No offence. Yeah, none taken. The tech guy shut his laptop. Well... Going to give Dan more bad news. I advised him to put in a camera from the beginning, but he was already dishing out a boatload for this game. Anyway, I'd stay clear of him today if I were you, kid. Maybe he shouldn't have ever installed this game. Yeah. Anyway, Dan's a good guy. He just wanted the best for the business. Give the family some entertainment, a place to have fun. But this is how he re he's repaid. Sucks, you know. When the tech guy left, Toby quickly strode through the kitchen, smelling pepperoni and melted cheese. He walked to the single employee bathroom and closed and locked the door behind him. He leaned his hands on either side of the pedestal sink, staring into the small mirror on the wall. He stared into the darkness at his back, with all the anger and frustration he had inside of him. He hadn't taken the rabbit cut out from the game. No, it had decided to leave all on its own, with Toby. And as Toby stared hard at the shadow, two eyes opened and blinked at him. Toby lurched back and yelped. His heart pounded like a drum. He grabbed at the door, trying to open it, but because he was staring at the horror in the mirror, 
he'd forgot to lock it. He took his eyes off the shadow for a second, unlocked the handle, and whipped open the door. He rushed out and ran into Dan. Toby stopped short, breathing hard. Uh, Dan. Dan gave him a weird look. You all right, kid? Toby cracked his knuckles, trying not to shake in front of his boss. Yeah, why? You look nervous about something. Toby adjusted his beanie. Um, no, I'm fine. Really. His face heated because he was far from fine. Dan eyed him some more. Okay, kid, whatever you say. Then he walked into his office. Toby sagged against the bathroom door. His phone signalled with a new text. It was Tabitha again. What about a herbalist? They can give you stuff to calm your nerves. No way. Well, it was just an idea. I'm here at Freddy's. Come meet me in the arcade. Surprised, Toby clicked off his phone as he hurried to the arcade to find Tabitha, who was peering over a kid's shoulder as he played a game. Reggie was right beside her, eating pink cotton candy on a stick. Toby stopped at her side, rubbing his damp palms on the shirt. What are you doing here? He was already nervous and it made him even more nervous to have her at the scene of the crime that he confessed to her. When he told her, when he told her his secrets, she'd been someone separate from his everyday life. She didn't know much about him or Freddy's, but now that his separate worlds were colliding, it felt weird and uncomfortable. Tabitha smiled as she looked around the arcade. This is a cool place. I've never actually been here. My parents aren't into places like these. It's a family pizza restaurant. She shrugged. They're vegans. She looked back to, to Toby, her smile dropping away. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, fine. Who's your friend, Toby? Reggie butted in. Hey, I'm Reggie. Tabitha glanced at Reggie. Tabitha. Reggie looked at Toby and lifted his eyebrows a couple of times in an annoying way. You come here often? He asked her. No, first time. Toby frowned at Reggie. He knew Tabitha wasn't a regular. What was up with him? He took Tabitha by the elbow and guided her away. Over her shoulder, he watched Reggie keep pointing to Toby, then to his own back. Then he made a big gesture like he was huge. And then a scary face. Then he mouthed very slowly, shallow, bigger. Toby rolled his eyes, then asked Tabitha, what are you doing here? I want to see the game. Toby shook his head. No way. Can't. It's out of order. No one is supposed to be in there. Can I at least see the outside of it? Please, I'm curious. Toby sighed. He didn't think it was such a good idea, but he felt if he didn't let her see it, she'd just keep on about it until she got her own way. Fine, but then you better go. Okay. And look, I trusted you with this. Don't make me regret it. You won't. I promise. She crossed her heart with her finger. Toby led her out of the arcade and to the door of hide and seek. He crossed his arms as she studied the shadowed rabbit and the logo. Seems so innocent, but then you know it's something dark and scary to her friend. She looked at Toby. How do you feel? Like it's always there and I'm never going to get rid of it. Toby shifted uncomfortably. Why is he always telling her stuff like that? You'll beat this, Toby. I'm making a list of ideas, like the ones I've been texting you about. I'm going to help you figure out how to solve this. We're going to get you in a better place. Toby just stared at her not knowing what to say, other than why. Why did she want to help him? Why did she even care? He wasn't sure she wanted her help. He, she, he wasn't sure he wanted her help anyway. He wasn't sure he could totally trust someone in that way. It had been so long since he trusted anyone. He'd learned being let down pretty much sucked. He adjusted his beanie and sighed. Whatever you want to do. Toby was running from someone or something. He was in a park at night. The pale light of the full moon washed across the scene. Stars twinkled above. Trees and bushes loomed across the area surrounding a small playground. His heartbeats were running a mile a minute. His breaths were coming out of his, out of his mouth at a pace he was certain he couldn't maintain. He hid behind a tree, trying to catch his breath. Something dark and fast torpedoed past him. So fast, Toby's hair moved as if, it, as if brushed by the wind. Holy cow, Toby whispered. It was the shadow, but somehow it moved faster than his eyes could follow. How is he going to escape something so quick? He launched himself off the tree, running by a grocery store and a school. The streets were empty of cars and people. He spotted a police station up ahead, had to get there and get help. He shoved through the doors. Someone please help me. There's something after me, please. But when he looked around, there were no officers. Hello? Where is everyone? Come on, I need help here. But the place was deserted, as if everyone had just walked away at the same time. Toby jerked his head toward the doorway. He felt the darkness coming. He wasn't sure how, but he knew it was getting closer. He whipped his head to the left and to the right, his nerves scrambling throughout his body. 
he spotted an empty desk and dove behind it. Oh, uh, and dove behind it. No, it's not a dove, it's not a bird. He spotted an empty desk and dove behind it, squatting underneath it, pulling his knees to his chin. He heard the doors to the police station burst open. Toby started at the, sh at the sound and squeezed his eyes shut. Please don't find me, please don't find me. The shadow raced past the desk. Toby heard the clank of the jail cell doors. Finding it empty, the darkness roared at him with the timber of a thousand angry beasts. Monstrous, terrifying. Toby bit his bottom lip in order not to scream himself. Um, his entire body started to shake. The shadow rushed by the desk again, and Toby sat for a moment, waiting to get some distance between him and the shadow. He licked his dry lips. I think it's gone. He slowly crawled out from his hiding place, but when he stood, he froze in horror. The shadow reared itself before him, its darkness crackling with energy. The shadow's narrow eyes, narrowed eyes peered down at Toby. Toby stepped back, and the shadow moved closer. Stay away from me, Toby shouted. But the shadow continued to lurch closer. The nearer it got, the bigger it became, until it loomed over Toby like a mountain of unforgiving darkness. The shadow's power had created a vortex of energy that blew through the room. Toby's hair flew back, and his clothes flattened against his body. Toby threw his hands over his head as the darkness crashed down, swallowing and surrounding him. Anger, despair, fear seemed to fill him up. He swung out with fists in terror and rage, trying to fight it, but his arms just swung through the air. The shadow devoured him. It leached into his eyes and through his nostrils. Toby shrieked, swallowing the darkness down his throat. Toby woke up screaming. No! He jumped out of bed, fell to the floor. Darkness was all around him. He launched himself backward, his entire body shaking. He hit a cold wall and he realised he was home in his room. It wasn't real, just a nightmare. But it had seemed so real. It was one of the worst nightmares of his life. His eyes stung and he began to cry, his shoulders shaking. Because if he'd learned one thing from the nightmare, it was that the shadow was so much stronger than him and that it wanted to win at all costs. He wiped at his leaky nose and howled in frustration. He hated this. He hated the shadow. He wanted it gone. He reached for his back, clawed at it. Get off of me, he scratched. He scraped. Leave me alone. He tore off his shirt and dug into his skin as if he could tear the shadow away. He clawed and slashed with his own hands, digging into his skin. Oh, I want you gone. He felt the burn of the scratches, the drips of blood. Just leave me alone, he screamed and cried some more, curling into a ball on the floor. But he knew the shadow was still there, that it wouldn't leave. He could sense it as if it were part of him now. Do Tobes, what is up with you lately? Connor asked when Toby walked through the kitchen. Connor stood at the kitchen counter, eating two breakfast sandwiches. He looked at Toby with wide eyes, as if seeing him in a way he'd never seen him before. Are you still sick? Maybe we should get Dad to take you to the doctor or something. Just leave me alone, Connor. There was no way Connor could handle with, with what was really going on with him. Tobes, I'm serious. You need help. I can tell something's wrong with you. You walk around like a freaking zombie. You're barely eating, and you're not whiny yourself. And you're not your whiny self. It's weird, and you're already weird, so that makes you weirder than usual. Shut up. Toby made a face and shook his head. Don't act like you care. Connor beat his chest with his sandwich. What? What do you mean? I care. Whatever. You only care about yourself and, you, and how you think you're the best at everything. That's not true. And just because I'm good at stuff, a lot of stuff, you don't have to get all bent about it. Toby gave a small laugh. Every day of your life, you tell me how you're the best and I'm nothing that I'm a loser. Connor didn't have to say much to that. So he just said, okay, well, I'm pretty close to being the best. Toby's eyes widened. No, you're not, Connor. You're not the best, and I'm not the best. You only think you are because for some reason you and dad think you're so great. So pathetic is more like it. Connor rolled his eyes. This is about dad, isn't it? You're jealous. Toby jerked back. What? You're jealous because dad and I spend a lot of time watching sports. Dad always invites you to watch with us, you know that. Why don't you hang out with us instead of barricading yourself in your room? Toby swallowed hard. You don't even know what you're talking about, so stop. Whatever, Tobes, you know it's true. But I'm not going to argue with you when you're practically ready to, to keel over at any minute. Do you even know how stupid you always sound at being the best at everything? 
There has to be someone out there better than you. You know that, right? Connor shrugged his shoulder. Whatever, Tobes. Listen, I told you. I'm not going to... You listen. Toby pointed a finger at Connor, ticked off and tired of all the dumb things that came out of his mouth. Just so you know, there's a new game at Freddy's and I'm playing it right now. And I'm winning. Yeah, it was a half-truth. Toby was still playing this hide-and-seek game with the shadow. He'd just taken the game home with him. He was pretty sure the rabbit was definitely winning though. But Connor didn't have to know that. Connor tossed his sandwich on the plate and crossed his arms. Oh, the truth finally comes out. There's a new game at Fre there's a new game at Freddy's and you didn't even want to tell me so that you could try and beat me at something. News flash, news flash little brother. It doesn't count until I've played. And once I do, I'll beat it and take my rightful spot at the top. Toby smiled as an idea dawned on him. Sure. Connor saw his smile and frowned. Sure, what? Sure you'll beat me. Toby walked out of the kitchen and down the hallway. Of course I will, little brother. Connor followed him. He always had to get the last word. That's the reality. Toby walked into the bathroom. He turned toward his brother, crossed in arms. Connor stood outside of the door. So what's the game called? Hide and seek. Perfect. Sounds like a kid's game. So it'll be easy. I'll go there after work tonight and snag the top spot. Not a problem. No, you won't, Toby told him. Connor just stared at Toby. Why not? Toby nodded toward the mirror, finally wanting his brother to see the truth. To see this awful shadow that wouldn't leave him alone. Toby had been the ultimate player by battling the shadow and he wanted Connor to finally know. He looked back at Connor. Because I'm still playing and I'm going to win if it's the last thing I do. He pointed his finger at Connor. I'm going to beat you, Connor. You just wait and see. I'll be the winner and you'll be the frickin' loser. It's going to be the best day of my life. Do you hear me? Best day of my life. Connor didn't look in the mirror. He just stared at Toby with wide eyes. I see. Then he simply shook his head and raised his hands as if surrendering. You know what, Tobes? Fine. You go ahead. Beat me. I want you to. Toby's mouth dropped open. What? I give up being the best. It's getting old, fighting with you all the time. I mean, dude, have you looked at yourself lately? Really looked at yourself in the mirror? You look sick and exhausted and you're still fighting with me. Like it's all that matters in the world instead of your health. This whole competition thing has gotten way out of hand and it's time to stop. So if it takes you winning and me losing, then I'm done. Toby didn't know what to say. Anyway, I got to get to work. If you need to stay home, do it. I'll tell dad you were really sick. Just get some rest, little brother. Connor turned away. Toby watched Connor down the hallway and disappear, then heard the front door slap, um, shut. Connor didn't care to be the best anymore. After all the games, all the competitions, all the fighting for years, and he had practically conceded to Toby. In a daze, Toby turned around toward the bathroom mirror. Toby stared at himself in the mirror, really stared at himself. His skin was paler than, paler than he'd ever seen it. His cheeks were sunken in. His eyes looked like pe like dark pits, pits in his face, sorry. He finally moved his gaze to the shadow. Clawing and scratching at his skin must have really ticked it off. Not only had it grown in size, but his eyes stared at him with a chilling glare. Then something moved within its face, and that's when he noticed the shadow had formed a mouth. A row of spiked teeth flashed into a smile. Toby's eyes widened in shock, and he started to pant in short breaths. The shadow radiated fear and anger, and just like in his dream, the shadow loomed behind him, a predator waiting to strike. Toby felt the urge to cower into a ball on the floor. The shadow was too powerful, too strong, and Toby knew he was too tired and too weak to fight it anymore. Why are you doing this to me? He yelled at the mirror. I just want this done. Over. Exhausted, Toby leaned his elbows on the bathroom counter, placing his face in his hands. Silent tears streamed down his cheeks. He finally accepted that he was never going to be rid of the shadow. It was going to stay attached to him. Forever. He tried everything he could do, he could think of, to get it off. Nothing seemed to hurt the darkness. The more he tried, the bigger, the stronger and more horrifying it became, and the worse it made him feel. Maybe the shadow had attached to him so easily because he'd been in a bad place emotionally. He'd been wrapped up in some crazy competition with his brother all these years. Nothing Connor did, or anyone did, had made him a loser. It had been his own sense of competition and messed up beliefs. 
true jealousy of Connor and Dad's relationship had made him think of himself as an outcast, like he didn't belong even in his own home. But if he was being honest, he was the one who had slowly separated himself further and further from his dad and brother because he wanted to win. All these years, he wanted to be a winner just like Connor, but none of that seemed to matter compared to the torture he'd endured with the shadow for the past few days. He raised his gaze to the shadows and took a cue from his brother. Okay, he said. You win. You beat me. I give up. Whatever. I don't care anymore. At that moment, Toby blinked as he felt the heaviness of his back lighten. Surprised, he slowly stood up straight in front of the mirror. The shadow was still there, but it had gone back to the size of when he'd first seen, in his, seen it in his bedroom. The eyes and mouth had disappeared into the darkness. All he felt was a little tickle in the middle of his back once again. With that realisation, it was like something clicked inside of him. A veil had lifted, and he saw everything with sudden clarity. Just like Toby, the shadow had only wanted to win. Toby walked out of the bathroom to change, and his cell phone rang. He looked at the screen and read Tabitha's name before answering. Hello? Hey, how are you? Do you need any more saving yet? She asked. Nope. Meet me before school, uh, behind the bleachers. I have some more ideas to run you by about the shadow. No, I'm not going to school today. Why? What's happened? Toby rubbed his face. Look, I'm ready to end this once and for all. It's time. What do you mean, Toby? Just don't worry about it. I know what I have to do now. What? What do you have to do? Does it involve... Reiki healing? I, I don't know what that is. I will look that up afterwards. Because uh, that's at the top of my list. What? Toby shook his head. No, you've got, got to go, Tab. Uh, if I forget to tell you, you're a good friend. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait! Toby clicked off the call, uh, then turned off his phone. It was time to go back to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Games. It was time to finish Hide and Seek. Toby walked into Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Games with a cool determination. A deadly calm had come over him. He finally knew what he had to do to finish this. It had come to him suddenly. How he cheated Hide and Seek and then the Shadow Rabbit had followed him home. How the technician said the game was still in play. It wouldn't reboot because Toby had to finish the game. The darkness had wanted him to concede because Toby had cheated. It was all clear to him now. He'd been so fixated on the fact that the shadow was on him that he hadn't focused on the end game. This wasn't like Ultimate Battle Warrior, where you beat each other senseless. That was a strategy. This was a strategy game. The toughest one he had ever played in his life. He walked into the restaurant, and there were only a few little kids playing in the play area and arcade since it was a school day. He walked through the arcade, and of course, Reggie was there. Toby realised Reggie was always there, and he wondered if the kid even had a home. This time, Reggie just stared behind Toby, as if he couldn't take his eyes off the shadow. Guess, uh, you never got rid of the shadow, Reggie said. At least it's small again, dude. Last time I saw you, it was massive. I have to complete the hide-and-seek game. Reggie blinked. I thought it was broken. It's in play, and I'm going to finish it. That's the game that started all of this? But how, we, how are you going to do that when it's all busted up? I'll figure it out. Reggie nodded and held out his fist. Respect, dude. The fire's back within you. Do, you. do what you gotta do. Toby tapped his fist to Reggie's and walked past him. Hey, Reggie said, and Toby turned back around. Can I have that girl Tabitha, Tabitha's digits? Toby just shook his head and made his way to the game, stopping at the door of hide and seek. The out of order sign was still taped to the door. It was locked, so Te Toby put in coins to open it and entered the room. There were fresh white patches on the wall, where Toby had busted open a few holes. All of the broken pieces were gone off the floor. The small barricade was completely torn down. There were no new cutouts on the wall. The pegs were still bare. Taking a breath, Toby went to the control box and turned on the power. Instrumental music blared through the speakers. After it completely booted up, Toby saw his name still in play. Toby dug out a peppermint toothpick from his pocket and slipped it into his mouth. He adjusted the beanie on his head. A voice bellowed from the speakers. Are you ready to continue, or do you forfeit the game? Toby's finger hovered over the forfeit button. Once he pushed the button, uh, once he pushed the bottom, he knew everything would go back to normal. The shadow would be gone, and the rabbit would return to hide and seek. He would have to go back to his life of being in control of his, bod of his own body. And he could be free. Toby bit his bottom lip as a familiar feeling spread over him. You see, he couldn't really get over the fact that the shadow had attached to him. 
that the shadow had played the ultimate cheat on Toby by making him hurt himself, by making him believe he was going crazy just so that he could win the freaking game. The shadow had wanted to win, and Toby had let it. Toby shut his eyes, trembling with anger. You thought you could beat me, he said. You thought you could turn my own cheating back on me. Well, I got a surprise for you. I'm not a loser. You're the loser. He opened his eyes, punched down on the continue button with heated determination, then turned his back to the park wall. He felt the shadow's anger slam over him. Jaw tight, Toby rushed backward toward the pegs where the tree was supposed to hang and rammed himself onto the sticks. The pegs stabbed through his back. Toby's body stiffened as he, gra as he gasped. His toothpick dropped from his mouth. He felt the shadow ri release. The dark energy faded away from him as if it never existed. I won, he whispered as blood dripped from his mouth. He smiled right before his eyes gently closed. The instrumental music restarted through the speakers. Welcome to hide and seek. Enter your name to try to find Bonnie. And let's begin. Oh, that's the end of hide and seek. <laughs> um, I'm. By the way, I didn't really talk that much through, throughout that entire story. Um, usually in, in the audiobooks that I do with my reactions, I, I do talk a lot. Um about like possible theories and where the story is going to go but I, I actually didn't see where that story was going really um it I don't really know what to say about it it, it was it was quite a good story I think um again not one of my favorites um what happened at the end so the ending I mean he put he died he died Toby was Toby died did he do that on purpose or I don't know like did he did he kill himself <laughs> I the the line that I think was quite cr creepy is uh well actually there are a few lines here I won he whispered as blood dripped from his mouth he smiled right before his eyes gently closed like that line is terrifying by itself and then the next line the instrumental music restarted through the speakers. You can just imagine a little boy, um, like with things through his back. What was it? Uh, like pegs through his back. And just a little boy with pegs through his back, smiling as instrumental music just started to fade through the through the speakers. Like, oh, that's that's creepy. That's that makes me shiver to me. Um, apart from that, I I didn't like. That's a, that's a, those are a cool few set of lines, but I I didn't really enjoy the ending. I feel like there could have been a much more extravagant ending, but I don't know if that's what Scott was going for. Apart from that, a pretty okay story. Um, obviously this must have something to do with the shadow animatronics, but don't ask me what it has to do with the shadow animatronics because I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. So if you guys have any theories. Uh, in the comments below, please do tell me. Um, I would like to know what you think about this story. Um, but that's it. That is Blackbird done, and the cliffs is coming out in less than a week, and we will be proceeding with the cliffs as soon as I can. Um, so yeah, if you if you are ready for the cliffs, please make sure that you subscribe. Uh, and yeah, I will see you then. Goodbye.